The global climate is changing. Our use of fossil fuels creates greenhouse gases which rise up in the atmosphere, resulting in higher air temperatures. Drainage of wetlands, logging and forest burning are other activities that increase the greenhouse effect. With the greenhouse gases wrapping us in an insulating blanket, life on Earth is overheating. This changing climate leads to extreme weather conditions, including hurricanes, flooding and drought. The greenhouse effect is a threat to living conditions on Earth. However, peatlands can help slow down this process. Peatlands act as an efficient storage for carbon dioxide, one of the greenhouse gases. And the more carbon dioxide we can put into storage instead of into the atmosphere, the more stable our climate will become. Mosa er værdifulde for, for klodens klima, fordi de lager tørv. Den CO2 eller det kulstof, der ligger i tørven, det er jo kommet fra atmosfæren. Så altså ved hjælp af fotosyntese, så trækker planterne kulstof ud af atmosfæren og lager i tørv. Så derfor har det sådan en kølende effekt for vores klima og danne tørv. Så der er trukket rigtig, rigtig store mængder CO2 ud af atmosfæren og lageret. Walking in a peatland feels like walking on a thick, soft carpet. It's like a waterbed. The many layers of peat are spongy and saturated with water. Peatland is a living ecosystem with two fundamental demands. It needs water and plants. When these conditions are present, the peatland will work to serve the climate. Planterne her, de fanger simpelthen ved fotosyntesen CO2 fra luften, som lager som ja, forskellige kulstofforbindelser i planten, øh, kulhydrater og stivelser og alt muligt andet. Og, og det bliver så lagret i tørven. Og, og fordi tørven længere nede er permanent vandmættet, så bliver det ikke omsat. Det sker over tusinder af år, så får man lagret de her tykke lag. Og det er derfor, at man på meget kort tid, hvis man dræner en mose, vi kunne få omsat alt det her CO2, man har lavet. Det kan man omsætte på ganske få år. Peatlands cover only 3% of the land surface of the earth. In contrast, forests cover 30%, 10 times more. Forests, everybody knows, are important for the climate, but peatlands are even more important because they contain more carbon than the forest. Peatlands are very old ecosystems existing already for 10,000s of years. It are special ecosystems with a very peculiar biodiversity that enables them to sequester carbon and to live for thousands of years. Therefore it is important to conserve peatlands for their biodiversity, for the climate and for all other ecosystem services they provide. Balancen mellem vand, planter og tørv er altafgørende. Og det er derfor det er så vigtigt, at der er vand på moser. When a peatland is drained, the peat is exposed to oxygen and microbes can attack the stored carbon. And as a result, this carbon is oxidized to carbon dioxide and released into the air. Drained peatlands release large amounts of carbon dioxide. Draining a peatland the size of a football field releases the same amount of carbon dioxide as driving 145,000 kilometers in a family car. In other words, draining even a small area causes the same effect on the climate as driving a car three times around the Earth. Drained peatlands have the same negative impact on the climate as coal-fired power plants, oil-fired heating and petrol-powered cars. Peat should be considered a fossil fuel like oil, coal and gas. The more peat is drained, excavated and decomposed, the more carbon dioxide will be released into the atmosphere and the warmer the earth will become. 
På europæisk plan kan man sige, at omkring 60 procent af moserne er drænet. Og på de nordisk-baltiske lande, der ser det en lille smule pænere ud, der er det lige, lige under 50 procent. Men det er primært, fordi Norge og Sverige ikke har drænet nær så meget mose som de andre lande. På global plan, der har, der har man kun drænet om, eller kun og kun, men der har man drænet omkring 15 procent af moserne. Men det betyder rigtig, rigtig meget i det globale kulstofregnskab. Altså, det har givet et bidrag på omkring 5 procent CO2. The Nordic and Baltic countries are collaborating to promote awareness about the value of protecting peatlands. This is being organized by the Nordic Baltic Wetlands Initiative. The initiative is the voice of the peatland wildlife and it is a regional collaboration under the Ramsar Global Wetland Convention. Finland is not only the land of a thousand lakes. The country is also the land of a thousand peatlands. Relative to its size, Finland has the largest area of peatland in the world. But more than half of the Finnish peatland has been drained, especially in the 1970s. The drainage was carried out to ensure more efficient forestry. However, in recent years, peatland restoration has begun in Finland. Draining ditches have been blocked and small dams have been built to keep water inside the peat. This allows the natural conditions of the peatland to recover. This in turn will benefit the global carbon dioxide balance. Denmark is one of the most cultivated countries in the world. Only a few percent of the Danish peatland remain undisturbed. However, the Danish landscape is home to one of the largest raised bogs in the Western European lowlands. Its name is Lille Vilmorje. It was the first peatland in the world to be internationally designated as a protected natural area because of its ability to bind and store carbon dioxide. The designation was made under the auspices of the Ramsar Convention which protects more than 2,000 internationally significant wetlands worldwide. The Danish raised bog is currently being restored. After decades of peat extraction, drainage and agricultural use, the process has been reversed. The bog is no longer being drained. Bungs and boarding have been dug into ditches and canals to retain the life-giving water in the peatland. The peatland has started storing carbon again, making room for a diversity of plants and animals. The flora and nature of the peatland are quietly working away to help mankind by storing carbon. The peatland is helping to prevent rises in the atmospheric level of carbon dioxide. In Estonia, several peatlands have been brought back to life in the past years, and more are to come. Many of the Estonian peatlands and wetlands have been drained in order to use the areas for farming and forestry. Drainage in the outskirts of the peatlands and in their surroundings is harmful to the wildlife and flora of the peatland. If the water level decreases, the peatland will dry out and the green cover will change. The change in vegetation may cause the peatland to grow into forest, thus making it even drier. So, once again, the solution is to keep the water level high, then the vegetation will build up the peatland, layer by layer. As part of the restoration process, straw is spread out over the land to improve the microclimate for the sphagnum creating mosses. The straw prevents the plants from drying out while a new green cover is being established.
In Sweden, peatlands occur from the south to the north, and especially the north of Sweden hosts large areas of mires. Unfortunately, most of these peatlands are affected by drainage. The Swedes are now working to restore their damaged wetlands. I projektet Life to Mire har vi hållit på att restaurera 35 objekt. Och med de 35 objekten har vi lärt oss olika sätt, olika metoder beroende på vad vi står inför för. Lutar det för mycket, då måste man bygga en plugg. Och då har vi gjort här. Ni ser den svarta strängen här i bakgrunden. Det är en torvplugg som är förstärkt med björkträd. Björkträden växte här på myren. De fick vi ta ner. Och så la vi dem i myren och så la vi på torv. Det kanske inte syns så mycket att det lutar. Men det lutar tillräckligt mycket för att vattnet får en rejäl skjuts. Så sätter man en plugg med jämna mellanrum. I det här fallet har vi satt den med ungefär 150 meter. Så får man lite mer stiltje på vattnet. Och när vattnet står mer still så är det lättare för myren att laga och växa igen. För då har man ett strömmande vatten, då växer det inte lika bra på det. Och det är viktigt när man restaurerar att växtligheten snabbt kommer igång. Så att man inte får en massa svart bartorv som ligger öppen. För då kan den lätt spolas bort när det regnar. Peatlands are vital habitats for a range of rare plants, birds and animals. You can find unique and highly specialized species here, which are found nowhere else. These species find a refuge in the peatlands. Here they can feed and grow in peace. Det er rigtig, rigtig vigtigt at bevare de sidste rester af vores naturlige moser. Men vi har fået lidt fokus på, hvor vigtigt det er for os. Man kan starte med at bevare alt det, som stadig er naturligt. Og så det, vi har drænet og opdyrket, det kan man sætte vand på igen. Alle de steder, hvor der stadig er tørv tilbage, det er rigtig værdifuldt for vores klima. Så få genoprettet resterne af moserne og få vand på igen. Centuries ago, peatlands were often shrouded in eerie mystery and legend. Today, we know that these wet landscapes help us halt the greenhouse effect. We have to strengthen our focus on peatlands. We have to conserve what is still good, and we have to restore what we have destroyed. Peatlands must be wet for the peatland, for the people, for the climate, forever.